Welcome to the Ultimate Aruba Travel Guide, where we'll share with you stunning beaches, unique landscapes, and the colorful cities that make this island so unique and special. Now we spent a month on the island as a workcation, so we really got to dive deep into everything this island has to offer. That's why we're sharing 40 things to do in Aruba, including all the costs you can expect to pay along the way, all in this episode of Lucas World Travel. Now, when you come to Aruba, the most happening place to stay is Palm Beach. This is where you'll find the majority of resorts, water sports, restaurants, shopping, and nightlife. Here, we loved watching the sunset from the Palm Pier, which has a lively happy hour, great food, and the best view of the sunset. Now, one of the best beaches in Aruba is Baby Beach, which has shallow, calm, turquoise waters that are so gentle, even babies can swim in them. We recommend going to Baby Beach in the morning because there's still plenty of room to spread out and you might even be able to snorkel with the turtles. You'll also see some fish in the rocky, corally part of the beach. However, by the afternoon, the turtles have disappeared because that's when the crowds arrive. While you're in the area, check out Cerro Colorado's Natural Bridge, which is a stunning viewpoint not far from Baby Beach. Simply park at the Cerro Colorado Lighthouse and take a nice scenic walk to the Natural Bridge. And on your way to Baby Beach, you can stop by the Red Anchor, which is a scenic photo stop that should take you about two minutes to take a quick but fun photo. Next stop is San Nicolas, where we're here to see all the beautiful murals. The murals of San Nicolas are so vibrant that the work seems to jump off the wall. We especially loved all of the realistic portraits and the colorful animals. Now, if you're looking for lunch while you're in San Nicolas, check out O'Neill's Caribbean Kitchen for some good food. I got the brown stew with a whole fish. And David got the fish and chips, and he's already chowing down on those fries. <laughs> Driving to the center of the island, you can see the Casabari rock formations. Here, you can take a quick two minute hike up the rocks to get one of the best views of the island. Plus, this spot has some lovely walking trails where you can see a variety of boulders, cacti, and the occasional lizard. The best part is that it's free to enter, so why not add it to your Aruba itinerary? Now just seven minutes away from Casabari are the Ayo Rock Formations. Now Ayo Rock Formations is a sacred spot here on the island and you'll find pictographs here from over a thousand years ago. So really cool. Um, plus you can climb the beautiful boulders that measure up into like 175 feet. So very cool formations and the cacti that surround this place are incredible to see as well. Next up, if you love animals, then you definitely want to go to the Donkey Sanctuary in Aruba, where you can buy a bucket of feed and interact with these sweet creatures. Oh, they tickle! <laughs> now this sanctuary exists because once donkeys were no longer needed for mining and for transportation, they were set free to roam wild on the island. 
Unfortunately, Aruba's desert landscape didn't provide enough food for them, so they started to die of diseases. That's why this sanctuary feeds and provides veterinarian care for hundreds of donkeys. So, not only is it fun to feed the donkeys, it really makes a difference as well. Another thing you can do in Aruba is climb up Hoiberg Mountain. Now they're supposed to be around 500, 600 stairs, so let's see how we do. Luckily, it's the later part of the day, about four o'clock, so it's a bit cooler than it was earlier. And okay, people, I do not think they were joking about the 500 stairs. Now it did take us about 10 to 15 minutes to get up here. So it was a good cardio workout for sure. Had some decent views, not 360 like I was thinking. You got 180 on one side and 180 on the other side because there's some vegetation in the way, but still pretty cool. Another activity we loved was taking a boat tour with the Jolly Pirates. For $65 a person, we got to explore Aruba with an open bar on a pirate ship. Our first stop was to the Antilles shipwreck, which sunk because of Dutch-German conflicts during World War II. Next, we stopped at Boca Catalina to see a variety of fish and coral. Our last stop was Malmont Beach, where we got to see these really cool flying fish. thousands of tiny sardine-like fish. This tour also included lunch and a fun rope swing. Our captain was particularly talented at the flips. But honestly, the snorkeling is just as good, if not better, from the shore. At Thrist Tropi Beach, we were able to see loads of beautiful fish up close, as well as swim with turtles. So be sure to come in the morning for your chance to see the turtles. But there's more beaches to see. Let's keep it moving. Just a three minute drive away from Tristopi Beach is Arashi Beach, which is an incredibly scenic beach with great views, snorkeling, and great infrastructure. This beach includes a restaurant, paid bathrooms, and a convenient bus stop so you can get here easily. Very close to Arashi Beach is the California Lighthouse, where you can pay $5 to climb up 117 stairs, seeing great views of Aruba all around you. We also recommend renting a 4x4 vehicle so you can go off-road on the more rugged northern coast of the island. Seeing sites like the Bushuribana Gold Mill. Now gold was first found in Aruba back in 1824, but over the years they processed over 3 million pounds of gold. So while you're here, might as well look on the ground and see if they left you any. This mill is an interesting bit of history with great views of the northern coast. Just a few meters away is the cave pool where you can climb down a ladder and scramble over some very slippery rocks in order to get to this lovely bluish green pool. Jump in if you dare and enjoy this unique environment. So first time I get, got in there, the water like sucked me and took me off. 
that water is so powerful. You really do need to know how to swim to just get in the So the cave pool is good for a bit of adventure, but not really for relaxation. Next up is the natural bridge, where you can see this beautiful rock formation and even walk upon it to create this cool natural bridge effect. While you still have your 4x4 vehicle, check out Aranoke National Park, where you can drive to the natural pool Kanchi. This is a very adventurous road. Always an adventure on Lucas World Travel. The road to Kanchi is very bumpy and uneven. It takes about 20 minutes to get there, but you will be jostled around your car quite a bit as you go. Although you can drive to the natural pool any day of the week, you can only swim there when sea conditions are calm. Sea conditions were not calm enough to swim when we were there. Nonetheless, we still enjoyed walking around and enjoying this uniquely beautiful landscape. So where you see that waterfall, that's where the natural pool is. And with the waves breaking with so much power, we could see why there's no swimming at the natural pool today. But this national park has so much more to offer. Another off-road viewpoint that you can go see is Dos Playas. And while Dos Playas is a beautiful beach, no swimming is allowed due to the strong currents. And while the rest of the roads in the National Park are mostly paved, these dips in the road can still be a challenge for smaller rental cars. But some attractions you can see without a 4x4 include Broca Prins, which is another beautiful beach where no swimming is allowed due to the currents. You can also see the Fontaine Cave, now what's nice about the Fontaine Cave is all the pict pictographs that are inside. Now, um, around 900 to 1100 years ago, people used to live in the caves and the shamans would draw pictures of the different wildlife on the wall. So you can go in there, see all the different pictographs and all the fabulous columns and stalagmites that are in the cave. And if you go down the nature trail on the right there, you can find a little pond where you can get a free fish massage. Full body. They come immediately. Hold your breath. They come immediately. Put your feet hold your breath. Ten seconds. I can't do it. They're strong. The big ones are strong. The little ones. Oh my god. Look at him go! He's like really eating me! <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh my God. Next up is the Quadriki Cave that's even more expansive with two big chambers to explore. And a very special heart-shaped window making for some very romantic photo ops. So for $20 a person, the National Park really does have a lot of beautiful nature to explore. The best place to go for affordable seafood on the island is Z Rover, where we got two mahi-mahi fillets and a pound of shrimp for only $35 US. They also have a very nice sea view, but I'd say the only drawback is the line. We had to wait 45 minutes just to order and another 45 minutes to get our food. So you should allow at least two to three hours to go to Z Rover. It's definitely not a quick stop. Now our favorite seafood restaurant though was Redfish Restaurant, where we got two blackened fish and shrimp dinners for $54. It was so delicious that we actually ordered this twice while we were on the island. So it definitely wins our vote as the most flavorful seafood on the island. 
So we decided to come up to Alto Vista for a wine tasting. But while we're here, we're checking out the chapel here, the Alto Vista Church. Now this church was built in 1750 and is actually the first chapel ever built on the island. There's also a peace labyrinth where you can do a mindfulness walk in the most incredible landscape. But the real highlight of Alta Vista is going to the winery where they'll take you through a tour of the grounds so you can see the difference between the arid desert landscape and the vineyard that they've planted. They also grow sugarcane here as well, so they can distill their own rum. We got to try a sample of the rum, as well as their signature cocktail, Straya, which was so delicious to me. And it is so similar to a margarita, I'm in heaven. It's my favorite drink in the world. Really delicious. The best part naturally is going inside for the wine tasting, where a sommelier will explain to you the different type of wines that you're tasting and why you should pair it with certain meats, cheeses, fruits, and desserts. It was such an educational experience that really enhanced my appreciation for wine. And it was in such a beautiful environment. But no trip to Aruba is complete without a stop to the capital, Oranjestad. So while you're in Oranjestad, make sure to take the trolley. Now this trolley is free to ride from 10 to 2, and it takes you around the main squares of the town. So you can get a good layout of the land, you can see the main attractions, and know a little bit about the history of Aruba. So it's a great way to start your time in Oranjestad. So now we're going inside the National Archaeological Museum of Aruba. This is where you can see thousand-year-old houses like this one. And they would have whole villages like this. This museum is donation-based, so give what you can to learn more about the natives of the island. Another good museum to see is the Historical Museum, where you can climb up the clock tower to get a great view of Oranjestad. Inside the museum, there's also some interesting exhibits about hat weaving, as well as artifacts from the colonial era. Another must when you come to Aruba is to try the local dish, Keshi Yena. This might be the best dish I've ever eaten with a savory chicken gravy and melted Gouda cheese on top. We tried this dish at Iguana Joe's right on Main Street and it gets our highest recommendation. Next up, you can head to the Allo Factory and Museum, where you can get a demonstration of how they've used aloes and various products over the decades. We got to tour the factory, as well as see all the different soaps and products they had. We definitely picked up some creams for my sunburn there. For nightlife, we were pleased to discover that Aruba had a vibrant salsa dance scene. Here you can take lessons and go to weekly socials that are fun and lively. Sometimes they even have live music. So if you're into dancing, definitely check out the Aruba Salsa Dance Company. And if you have any time or energy left, you can check out these beaches. Mangel Hato is another lovely beach that has good snorkeling. There's a specific launch point in between the mangroves. And from there, you can swim out and you can get a clear view of some beautiful tropical fish.
You can also check out other resort beaches like DV Beach and Eagle Beach, which is absolutely gorgeous. So I hope this list of 40 things to do in Aruba gives you some ideas of how to spend your time on your next trip. Although the beach is Aruba's biggest draw, this little island still has a lot of adventure and nightlife to share as well. Up next, we'll be sharing how much we spent during our month in Aruba. So please like, subscribe, and ring the bell for even more Aruba budgeting tips. Until next time, you can check out the 15 things that you should know before you go to Aruba on the right there. As always, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for sharing with all your travel pals and happy travel planning until next time.